welcome. I'm Kelly Kearney with Starry Constellation Magazine, and with me today is star of the new epic historical drama streaming on Peacock, Those About to Die, Laura Wolf. Thanks so much for talking with me today, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. You know, this is a great show. I watched the first few episodes, and wow, it's epic. <laughs> you play Queen Bernice of Judea and the great-granddaughter of Herod the Great. Not sure you know that, but uh, in the epic historical family drama, or not family drama, in epic historical historical drama about Rome. How did this amazing role come to you, Laura? That's actually a very interesting story how that happened. Um, a friend of mine had reached out to me almost maybe two years ago, had said, hey, Laura, there will be this incredible show. You should be part of it. Get your agent on it. So I tried, didn't have any luck, nothing. Mm. Forgot about it, thought, all right, you know, it, it happens. We're actors, we're used to it. And then right before Christmas, um, I received uh, an, an audition request from a casting director I didn't know who's based in Italy and they wanted me to um, to audition for this role. And I didn't even, I didn't put the two together. I didn't remember that it was the same project. All I knew was, oh, this sounds very interesting. It was very, you know, the writing was, was very attractive and intriguing to me and the part was incredible. So I auditioned overnight and then sent it in and the next morning I received a call back. Uh, well, yes, a call back saying I'm shortlisted for the project. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to the details and I realized, oh my God, that's the same project my friend had told me about. So I called him up and asked, did you do anything? Is this coming from you in any way? And he said, no, absolutely not. Didn't even know there was an Italian casting director attached to it. So long story and really very long story short, um, I get the part, finally meet the casting director and ask them, how did you find me? Because I'm not known in Italy. I'm, right. I, I live in New York. Um, so they said they were so desperate to find the right person for this part. They started doing this extensive IMDB search. Hmm. Put, put in filters like Israeli, Middle Eastern, Persian, Arabic, a certain age range. And then they just went through thousands of profiles. And apparently that's what they told me. They saw me and said, hopefully she can act and sent me over <laughs> an audition. <laughs> that's a great story. You know, besides holding, Queen Bernice is the you are the wife of the future emperor, Titus Flavi Flavianus, um, and uh, she's the leader of her own people, obviously. Uh, how was she described to you in the beginning when you took on the project, and how did she sort of evolve from when you first signed on to the final edit, or did she? Well, you know, the thing is, because she's based on a historical character, Yes. yes. Um, in the beginning and in the end, I still had the same facts, but the same facts also varied a lot because depending mm -hmm. on where you read and who you ask, Berenice is described very differently. And it's still, and it's really up to anyone's interpretation really to know, to decide whether they think she is a genuine person or not. I can't tell you that right now. I played her in my own interpretation. But what I found so interesting is just that, you know, despite her being a queen of her time and being so powerful and also so important, you know, for, for the Jewish people during the Second Temple era of that time, I'm amazed that she's not, you know, it, that there is not much more buzz around her like right. Cleopatra had, right, or has. Even my mother, it's funny first three months i kept telling her mom i'm playing berenice and she will go to her girlfriends and say my daughter is playing cleopatra oh <laughs> you're like no 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 
I love her so much for that. I love her so much for that. Um, but it's 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 funny, and for me, it's you know the the big thing is it's it's a big big honor to take on this role and bring her to the screen finally. Yeah, and I you know I'm watching the show and I'm thinking the chemistry between you and your co-star Tom Hughes, who plays Titus, your husband was riveting. Uh, did the two of you do a chemistry read or have a chance to discuss the characters and where you're going to go with things um, prior to getting on set? We didn't have a chemistry read, but we met a couple of days earlier because I I happened to be in Rome at, this, at that time. We shot oh, the whole perfect. thing in Rome. And as soon as I knew I was in for this role, um, you know, they put me in touch with Tom and we had a little bit of time to talk about it and, you know, also decide on how much we, we want to connect beforehand mm -hmm. um, because, and I'm not allowed to say too much, but right, that these two have a certain conflict. Yes, there's a push and a pull. There's chemistry, there's certainly chemistry, but there's a lot of things uh, pulling them together and apart in exactly. political things and things like that, that the fans are going to really love, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So right from the start, though, speaking of those sort of uh, things that are pushing them together and pulling them apart, right from the start, we see that your character is a thorn in Sir Anthony Hopkins, who plays Emperor the Stop. I can never say that they... Vespasians. Yes, <laughs> the I, know, I know we all um, He sees <laughs> her as a threat to Rome and her Judean influences he sees as a weakness for Titus's path to succession, who is predicted to follow him once he passes away. Uh, you didn't spend too much time on screen that I saw with Sir Anthony Hopkins, but yes. did his presence set the mood on set because he completely embodies this role? It's kind of scary. Absolutely. I, you know, it's, it's Anthony Hopkins. Right. I mean, when you found out you were playing opposite him, what was your thought on that? You know, I, I think, I think you can put him in any role you want and yeah. he would just turn it into something else. That's, that's who he is, the presence that he has, what he brings to the table that, you know, you, you can hear it in his voice. There's like a certain pulsating depth that is in this voice right and i think it's from all his life experience and his experience as, a, as an actor and you know it's it, it is just such a privilege to you know be on the same project and right. you you feel challenged to put your own best work out there right yeah obviously that i mean i I feel like everyone probably on the set was uh, was both maybe fangirling and fanboying a little bit about him being on the sh on the show, but also probably holding that respect for him because he comes on right from the beginning. Uh, you feel the weight of that character and the importance of it, and I feel like that can only come from his performance. And I was just wondering if everyone felt that weight of his presence, even if you weren't in scenes with him. Oh yeah, I just know, absolutely, a hundred percent. I saw, I saw actors who were in the same scene with him, maybe the night after the shoot. I saw one or two of them who were still shaking. I mean, still shaking and almost as if they were blessed by having had that experience, you know, in a strange divine way. Um, and it, it that just, I think it just happens naturally when you have someone who has that gravitas and you've seen this person for years and decades in your favorite films. It's it, it's so absurd. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can't believe I get to do this every day. Absolutely. And you know, be a presence of that talent is uh, is probably astounding. Often actors like yourself, they search for the link between their character and themselves, a, a familiarity, a connection that helps them kind of step into the shoes of their character. Did you find a connection with yourself in Queen Bernice that helped you kind of understand her a little bit? Um, you know, I think there was something, and I don't want to sound, uh, 
too mysterious here, but there was something that felt very, that felt un, it's untangible to really put it in words. There was a certain connection. The moment I read the script, even the sides, the way it was written, the way the words flowed, that resonated with me on some sort of deeper level. And instead of trying to analyze it, which I usually do, <laughs> I just told myself, this is a good thing. Just go with it, flow with it. Um, and, you know, later on in the process, as I was putting together the character for myself, I realized, wow, actually, she reminds me a lot of my Persian grandma, bless her. She's not with us anymore, mm -hmm. but, you know, she was also someone who had a very strong personality and someone who basically divorced my grandfather in Iran with three kids and told him to get out ah, and then raised, raised three kids on her own with no money. Um, and I saw that strength in her as much as I saw that it, there was no bitterness. There was always this graciousness that she brought to everywhere she went to. The fact that she protected her kids, raised them on her own, and she did it despite anyone's scrutiny, anyone's, you know, bad mouthing her because that's what she had to do. And I, yeah, I put that together at some time and I, yeah. That's fascinating. And uh, you can see that strength come through in the character. Uh, every scene that she was in, um, she certainly was inti wasn't intimidated by her husband and his family and their, uh, <laughs> their thoughts on her, we'll say. Um, all of these characters, though, you mentioned earlier, uh, are historical figures with volumes of books and works on their lives. Uh, what sort of preparation did you do when you uh, got the role? Did you dive into some research on her and kind of get to know who she was? Yes, of course. Uh, that was that was the whole fun about it, right? Because it's, it's first, it was the first time I was uh, I was cast in this type of genre, right? right? Historical, and in a historical genre, and that was th that was the most fun for me, right? Just going into the library and being able to pick up a book and see what's written. I called up a historian, even. Um, I asked my Jewish friends in New York what their knowledge was from the, of the character. I read up German literature because I also speak German. But, and so it was also interesting to just see how the literature, depending on language, also differs. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just had to connect it with who I am. Right. And somehow you get this fusion of a character that you then present. Right. And, it's, and I guess the great thing about that is you can kind of get an idea of who she is. But since there's no actual footage of who she is exactly. or anything like that, you, you are free to kind of take what you've read and create it yourself. You know, it's not like anyone's going to say that's not how she was. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know what? I'm sure I'm sure there no, I'm not sure, but there's always a possibility that there's someone who's going to say, no, but just that's not how she was. Of course. And you know what? That's okay. That's, that's okay. okay. Art is uh, from the eye of the beholder, right? Whoever sees it is how they take it in, you know? And that's what we're talking about. Art. Acting is art. History can be art, you know? Exactly. And I mean, that said, I think, I think this show actually managed to get very close to um, the facts that I read, at least. I think they put a big effort on that to, to make it as accurate as they can be. You know, sometimes you just don't know what happens to the characters. You just don't know, so you have to make it up. <laughs> right, right. And this show really did uh, focus on as many different types of characters, the diversity of the of the story. They really highlighted all those different parts that were <laughs> coming together during that time period, you know, it wasn't just solely focused on the emperor and his lineage, you know, and I thought that was fascinating. I, I thought that was amazing that they did that, you know, not only, I mean, a lot of, a lot of shows right now, a lot of content tries to be diverse, right? And this show did it in such an organic way. Yeah. I'm so proud of that. You, you should know? be. 
it's cool. It's cool that they manage to do it and manage to do it in an authentic and organic way. Um, and I simply think it creates more layers to see who was around, who, what, what cultures were colliding and, um, you know, show the different layers that that kingdom had back there. Right. Yeah, That's it takes a, a, a much more vivid photo or painting of, hmm. um, of Rome and all the all the dynamics that were happening at the time. Uh, what was your experience working with director uh, Roland Emmerich? Because he's no stranger to massive scale dramas. I mean, he did what? Independence Day, Godzilla, The Patriot. Uh, what was it like working with him? What was your experience like? When I first heard that Roland Emmerich would be shooting this, I just kept trying to figure out how he would apply his, you know, his expertise to this ancient show. Mm -hmm. um, and then I saw what he did, and it's it's incredible because he he has such a clear vision um, of how he wants to approach something, and it's very very specific to who he is and how he's worked. And then maybe in the beginning you don't fully understand where he's going and what he's doing, but it was such a beautiful experience to see myself having those feelings and then say, you know what, just let go. Let's see what happens. And then it just turned into something incredible. And certain times, Roland, what I really loved about him is he doesn't micromanage, right? He has the bigger picture in mind. He knows his actors, he knows what's happening. And then if something doesn't work, he will say something, he will intervene, right? But if everything is okay, then he, he trusts his actors, he loves his actors, and you really felt that, and that was amazing. Um, and then at times, you know, he, he didn't really like what was written in the scene, and he just, you know, he changed things around, and we tried to follow, um, and then pushed, pushed to get performances out of the actors. Um, that I, I still can't believe that certain things happen, and I, I have so much respect for Roland Emmerich. So and much trusting his actors, it's kind of a two-way street. He puts trust in you, and then you feel um, you put trust in him to be a little bit freer with your performance to try things out, probably, and, and get feedback from him, and you feel like, you know, you're on set, this is what I have to offer, and you trust that it's going to turn out the way you are hoping it would. That trust in it with a director is really important to get great performances. You can absolutely see it in this show. Absolutely. So um, let's talk about the fact that this show is not for the weak at heart. It is not for the pearl clutchers. It is gory. It is violent. It is provocative. It is sexy. There is nudity. There is blood. Even the credits are dripping in blood. And there's gladiator fights. There's lions. I mean, we are talking just over the top. Do not come with uh, sensitivities because you will, maybe this will, show won't be for you. If you're not into blood, if you're not into violence, it's maybe <laughs> not for you. But if you are, this is your show. Um, as a queen, you did not really get a chance to do many physical things, any yes. scenes, like too many physical scenes. But what was your most challenging scene that you did film? In a physical aspect? Yeah, in a physical aspect. Like you did have physical scenes, but not in the same way that say, the gladiator fighters had, you know, you had a different um, physical physicality to your scene. So what right. were some of the things that were challenging about those? I mean, something that is actually a funny story. <laughs> we're here for the funny stories. Right, okay, so, so, so right in the beginning, I, you know, I was made aware that, that there would be um, intimate scenes. Sure. I just didn't know how you know, what the scenes exactly entailed. You know, it, was, it wasn't decided at that point. I mm -hmm. uh, had an intimacy co coordinator. She was lovely and great. So I, I knew I was in good hands. But at the same time, it was supposed to be my first day of shoot. And then something happened and they moved the date, which I was very happy about. They moved it three months later into the summer. Yes. And so I knew now I have time to just get in shape. And then I, I just, I was ridiculous. I 
treated it as if I'm on an action film and I put myself on some insane regimen um, with with what I ate and how I worked out and <laughs> it was some heavy preparation for that one scene and obviously I can't tell you exactly what that scene then looked like but it it I I had I really had to laugh afterwards it was funny and um it's good to know that i can go onto my self-discipline and go through such a strict regimen mm -hmm. um, i can transform if i need to um and you know in the future i i would love to actually get to do some physical stuff i i would love to get into some fight choreographies stunts yeah. there's some of those stunts were stunts. i mean obviously i'm not going to go into it but um and maybe some of it was filmed uh uh with a little cgi some green screen but oh, yeah. uh a lot of the stunts on there i can see you probably sitting back watching this being like i'd like to get into some of this it was so exactly it was so exciting to just watch from from afar and uh, i kept telling myself but you're queen it's okay you're queen next time next time <laughs> don't sweat laura please don't sweat <laughs> <laughs> oh and we were sweating that was one thing we were sweating because we were shooting in italy during a heat wave oh. in the chinichita studios and we had to turn off the acs during mm -hmm. during the shots because because you could hear them it was an, it's still very old old technology and so we mm -hmm. had to turn off the acs and it was it was it was ridiculous i know it's it's ridiculous for me to even mention that but just for you to imagine how we felt that i'm mentioning this now to you and i i was wearing something loose and regal and yet there were just beads of sweat just you know you were covered in sweat Shout out to the makeup crew because uh, I'm sure that they had their work cut out for them with oh, all yeah, that they sweating. <laughs> they loved it, yes. <laughs> so the size of this project, like we've been talking about, just feels so massive from a huge ensemble you guys filmed in Rome. Like I talked about, not that you guys probably had real lions, but there was like lions and there was horse chariots and it was just so big in scale. Um, even the costumes and the sets just seemed yes. so... Um, like they just spent a lot of money on it. Um, it's very larger than life. What were some of your favorite scenes to film or scenes where you were kind of like, wow, this is bigger than I had imagined it would be? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, I had a few of those moments. Um, one was definitely shooting the scene with the lion attack. Mm -hmm. We won't go into and too many details, guys, but... Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm just letting you know that was one scene. You can look out for that when it comes out. It's it, That was quite incredible to just watch um, how it all came together. Um, but generally, also, they, they, they had these insanely huge LED screens on stages that would turn 360. Oh, wow. Um, so you have to imagine you have an LED screen that is animated so every once in a while you see like a soldier move or a bird or or a cloud right and it would move into a certain direction and the stage would sometimes turn into the other direction wow. that happened specifically when i was on a horse and mm. the horse did not like the spinning effect of that but it was but it was interesting right i've, I've just never experienced something like that um and sometimes i would look up to the screen and i think wow i could be fooled this totally right. looks real it's amazing yeah. yeah i'm actually surprised was the majority of it filmed in studio or was there uh rome shots as well that you filmed I, it was the majority the majority of it was studio yes wow yes. wow amazing and you know that was also funny because then after a day of shooting, we go back to the hotel and the Coliseum is right there. And, you know, all the ruins are right around us. And we're like, well, we could have just, you know. <laughs> right, right. Things have changed a little bit in a thousand years, though. It's not exactly. so ready for uh, spectators. Exactly. The tourists, right? the tourists, you know, can photoshop uh, them out. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, so let's see. Oh, yeah. You know what I wanted to ask about? 
10X, played by Game of Thrones ultra villain, uh, uh, what's it, Iwan Rian? I can never say his name correctly. Yeah, Iwan Rian. Uh, he was fantastic in the show. Um, but he said something in the beginning. Um, he said Rome's populace only cared about uh, game and bread. As our world kind of dangles over the precipice of like a similar apathy between play and uh, distractions, distractions, you know? Um, is there a lesson to be learned from this show that maybe we should all be paying attention to? Interesting. You know, you bring up distraction, and that's actually very interesting, right? Because distraction seems to be in our day, every day, all the time. And if we're not, if, we're not, if we don't pay attention to the distraction, we just lose our path. It's, it's very easy to do. I mean, in the smallest thing of just opening your phone and scrolling away and boom, you missed your appointment or, you know, distraction is everywhere and we have to look out for it. We, we can't be, we can't become a slave to the distractions in our world because there is too much of everything. And I think the show is amazing that way with all the different storylines that we have and all the little things that happen in the alleyways and no one knows about that's all very interesting and it's it's so easy to lose track and not pay attention right yeah feels like uh empires fall when people are asleep complacent <laughs> yes exactly well said well said <laughs> yeah that definitely i i felt that you know i'm watching all these political strings being pulled on the show and financial strings being pulled and political and, and you know empire strings being pulled and and the people the people of Judea were hungry, want food, you know, just basic things. Um, the distractions kind of, everyone was kind of concentrating on their own part in life while, you know, we all know what eventually happened to Rome. So maybe that is a little lesson right. that we can learn. I mean, there's also the element of, I would say celebrity, right? That we have mm -hmm. today. The things that we get pre presented in media and that we believe and we pay attention to it while totally forgetting that this is happening on the other side, right? And it's similar, like I saw it in my character as Bernice, as a queen, you know, how the Judeans react to me, um, what they hear and the, the way they form their own opinions distracts them really from what the character tries to do, tries to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. I don't want to go into any details about what happens, but that is so true. Um, so what's next for you, Laura? Are you working on any new projects that we can look out for? Um, so next, I'm hoping to film. I can't I can't say the details, but I, I'm hoping to film a film in Georgia, the country. Oh, in the oh. Fall. Very yes, nice. I, I hope that Russia won't invade and we'll be safe. And we, uh, I'm gonna, you know, I, I'm I'm excited to travel a little bit for work. That's always the thing that excites me a lot. Um, and that would be a thriller spy film. Very exciting. It's a it's, it's a it's a popcorn situation. And oh, yes. well, that's I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that it happens. Yeah, I mean Georgia. Let's keep it together, Georgia, so we can get this film together and the people in Georgia. <laughs> also. Exactly. Um, what would you like to say to the to everyone, fans and new fans that you're gonna get from this show? And I have a feeling the the people that are gonna watch the show are going to react onto it and it's gonna become their new summer favorite. So what would you like to say to them? I really hope that everyone watching will just be able to let go of whatever is going on around and just just watch the show, just enjoy the show, see what you take from it, and maybe take that and put it a little bit in your life and see what happens. Yeah, I think I loved it. I was glued from the first few moments. I, I just kind of binged it yesterday and the day before, and uh, yeah, I really loved it. I but you beat me to it because I haven't done that. Ooh. Well, you've got you to that because it. It, is, it is quite <laughs> the ride. And I think that fans um, uh, right now are ripe for the this kind of historical drama. We like those violent, yes, those yes, yes. sexy, those provocative, those action-packed shows. And uh, 
for summer, it's the best kind of show to watch, right? Yes, because you also have the opportunity to watch the Olympic Games right after. Oh, uh, yes. Right? It, it, it's, it's, a, it's perfectly timed. And um, I have a feeling that we'll be talking about the show still in the fall and maybe even in the winter.